book of Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 and 21. Book of Genesis 50 verse 20 and 21. But as for you, this is Joseph speaking to his brothers. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. There ends the reading of God's word. I want to talk about Joseph uh, for a couple of days. We want to introduce Joseph to us. I know we know much about Joseph, but there's a concept that I, I believe that we can learn from Joseph. Uh, and today, in, 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 uh, in thinking about Joseph, you're asking ourselves, do you know why you are born? Do you know? Some of us have very interesting answers. Some of us even think there was a coincidence and an accident. Some of us, many things have spoken to us until we are not so sure whether the, the, our biological fathers are really our biological father. It's spoken too much to us. It's like we feel our moms hate us. So sometimes we are not so sure when the question is, do you know why you are born? Others listening to me, they will take a long time before they discover their purpose. Yani, you live for a long time. By the time you discover your purpose, you are just about to go. Others find their purpose very early. Like St. Paul. Paul is going on a journey. He is going to persecute the Christians. But as he goes, he finds the Lord and from there he is given his purpose. His purpose was not to prosecute his purpose was to win souls and bring them into the kingdom. There are two things or two days that are very important to us. Uh, for us that, that are Pentecostal, we have many. Actually, the Pentecostal have four. The day they are born, the day they get married, the day they die, and the day they go to heaven. Those are Pentecostals. We, because everything we relate with where we are going. But generally, there are two days that are very, very important. The day you are born and the day you find your purpose. The day you are born is easy to remember. It's actually very easy to find it, apart from those that were born um, during the emergency. We that were born during those years, we don't know actual when we were really born. We know the year somehow by guessworks. When you are told what was happening, and so on, then you say, okay, so... Kenyatta was arrested. All right. Then, then you add and minus something. You know you add that and minus something. Then you say, this could be the year. And uh, to be honest with you, even the man that I celebrate, I am so sure, maybe even 100%, I wasn't born that day. But I had to look for a date. Please. And uh, when I was looking for a date, February was fantastic. So 23rd February... I picked it. Little did I know that my wife will also be born on the 23rd, but on a different month. So what a coincidence. So I chose 23rd. I found my wife was born in May 23rd. I thought maybe I would have said May 23rd, then we would be celebrating a day together. So it is very easy for you to remember the day of your birthday because you celebrate birthday. But the day that sometimes is hard to discover and find is the day that you find your purpose. Because some of us, even now listening to me, are still trying to pursue your purpose. What is my purpose? Why am I here? Why did I come on this planet? And uh, in the process, some of us do very, very interesting things. We do many, many challenging things. We do some things that um, we ought not to do, but we are still looking for our purpose and so on. Some of us travel to look for purpose and other do other, other things trying to find what is my purpose. Why am I here on this planet? Why did God bring me to this world? What am I supposed to leave behind as I go? So there are two great days in a person's life, the day we are born 
and the day we discover why. The first, the date is easy, as I have said earlier, and thank God that my time has been up the last, for the last uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, if that clock is serious, then I should wind up and go, but save me, because I know I haven't even started. How can you finish before you start? So finding our purpose is very, very important. There are two great days in a person's life, the day we are born and the day we discover why. The first day explains your presence or not. So here I am, and uh, I was telling people in the U.S. and Canada as we visited that Uhuru is waiting for me. As they told me to stay a little longer, I said, no, 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 no. Uhuru anauliza nilienda wapi. And some of them were wondering, why? Wewe ni nani? And, and then I would answer and tell them, because Uhuru anayesabu watu, anataka kujua watu wake, kwevi razima ajue niko hapi. So we, yesterday nilienda kuesabiwa, walikuja kutuesabu uh, kule kwetu. Kwa sababu, nilipozaliwa, ilikuwa nilazima, nianze kuselebrate na kuenjoy mambo ya hapa uh, Kenya. So nilipokuwa nikiesabiwa, liniuliza, nilizaliwa wapi, very interesting questions, very, like they asked you, you know, very, very, very interesting questions and so on. The, the, the most interesting question was the question they asked my wife and not me. And yet, I'm the father of all the children that we have had. And, and, and they, make, they make it very personal. He is your mama. Wewe mama, umezaa vijana wangapi? I'm wondering. Ni, ni wangapi wako hai? You know, I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> Ati yo ni personal, yo ni awa mama. And, and, and I thought it was very interesting. So here we are, and um, so my birth here gives me, the, declares that I belong to this country and I belong, belong on this earth and so on. But finding my purpose becomes a little bit hard. April 18th, 2013, somebody called Sin Collier, please forgive me because of my accent, was assigned to a certain intersection on the campus of Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or what they call MIT, in Boston. Three days earlier, two bombs exploded near the finish line on the Boston Marathon, killing three people and wounding about 250 people. A massive heart hunt was put on, and eventually the guy was cracked down and he was God. But something else happened to this officer, Sin Collier, that this person who threw the bombs found his way into Sin's patrol car and shot him five times. And he was pronounced dead when they took him to hospital. Now, normally, when you die in the course of duty, uh, the other officers come and they celebrate you. And their senior most officer was celebrating uh, this uh, officer. And he said this. He was only 27 years. But this is what he said. This man loved police work as a calling. So that was his purpose. You see, at 27, finding your purpose... And some of us at 60, we are still struggling with our purpose. It can be so sad because we will keep on doing so much and we have not clicked to the direction that the Lord wants to take us. I don't know whether you know that you can go to school and do all the courses that you can do, but then later you come and pursue your purpose. I look at the reporters. There are some reporters that are lawyers, but they chose, they went to law, finished, got a degree, but they are reporters. They are anchors, news anchors. Because as they studied and went about in life, finally they settled down to their purpose and they, they are happy about, about it. So this man, Shane, was born to be a police officer. I don't know what you are born to be. Some of us are born to be mothers. And I thank God for mothers. Because not everybody can be a good mother. There are some that mother, but they mother and they are bitter about their mothering. It's like they are forced to. But others enjoy it. They love it. It's like it's passion. No wonder some love it so much that having ten children is not a big deal. I'm not saying you have ten, but I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, 
I went to Bible school with a guy, a Mzungu from Canada. I think by the time he stopped having children, he had 13. And that is not, not normal for the Mzungus, but he had 13. And at one time, and all of them were girls. At one time, he came with them as a missionary in Zimbabwe for a while. So some love it. It's, a, it's like, I have found my purpose in this life. I'm going to bring children into the fear of the Lord and I'm going to help. And some of you seated here, you are shaped to be a senator. Now the problem is that maybe the way you sit and where you live and what I'm talking about is like I'm speaking Greek. But some of us are shaped that way. Some of us are shaped to be principals of colleges and institutions and vice chancellors. Some of us are shaped to be even the president of this nation. But here you are seated. But you have to pursue and know why you are born. Because once you know it, you'll be a blessed person. There are some of you here that your purpose is to make wealth and bless others and support the work of God. Without a sweat. You know, there are some when you talk about money, they sweat. Others, when you talk about money, they are ready to give. They are even asking. Because they have found their... Blessed be the name of the Lord. So some are born to be soldiers. Some of you looking at me, you will only settle when you have a, a buduki and you doida around and you are happy for that. Doida is marching. It was not in my note, but it was in my heart. So in other words, we are there. There we are. We stay for long as we try to find our purpose. But the verse that I read simply gives us a man who had caught up with his purpose. But before he came to his purpose, lo and behold, that man went to hell and back a couple of times. And it encourages me to know as I walk towards my purpose, there are things that will not be right. There are things that might go wrong around me. There are people that might say things that are evil towards me as I go towards my destiny. Because finding my purpose is like this. And somebody says this. He said this. Finding our purpose is not like a sun burst. No, but it is a sunrise. Do you understand a sunrise? In a panda too. Sahi ni sa ine. Hatuyoni. Lakini tunajua imesukuma giza. Giza iko huko pande za gana huko. Giza iko huko. Lakini bado itaisukuma isukume kwa bahari. For us to communicate with Kenya, we were to do a few things. One, Nikukata kulala. Ili tuonge na watu wapa. Ili tuone harvest conference ikifunguliwa. Ili ibidi tuamuke mapema. Na ili tuone first service hapa na second service. Ina tubidi tukae kabla tujalala. Yani tukae. Baka tuone mumehubiri service ya kwanza ama ya piri. And maybe Alice might mention it later. But the point is, finding your purpose. Joseph found his purpose, but by the time he's finding his purpose, many things have gone wrong. But some of us, finding purpose is easy. Like Paul found his purpose immediately. Immediately. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, there is a promise there. That if we trust in the Lord, he will make our way straight. In other words, we'll find our way faster. How exactly does he do that? He does it in a couple of ways. Number one, he can put you exactly where he wants you to be. You just find yourself where he wants you to be. And I want to give you a testimony. A lady a couple of years here in this country, her husband died and she was bringing little children and she had financial challenge. But then she started praying that God would help her. Lo and behold, her father-in-law also died. But before the father-in-law had died, he had given her a piece of land for her husband. 
And some church members came, Bethel Church came, and they wanted that place to use it for a church. She gave it out. She never sold it. She gave them. She told them, use it. When you find another, you return it because this is for inheritance. So the, the church used it, and they found a place to go. Before they when they said, we want to bless you. Woman, we want to bless you. What do you want us to tell the Lord? And she said this, tell God that I want to go to America, and I don't know anybody, and I don't know how, but he does. So this preacher prayed that simple prayer. God, you know how and you know when that you will open that door to go to America to this lady. And for a few years, nothing happened. Nothing happened. It was, she was just there struggling with her children. And one day, her father-in-law died. He had gone to visit his, her, his son in the U.S. When the father died, the son-in-law, the, the brothers, the the brothers to her husband prepared themselves and the sisters to go so that they can bury their father or come with the body. That one I don't know the details. Because I took, I took the miracle myself. I forgot all the other details. So these brothers are, they have forgotten the widow here. They are trying to work on their paper so that they can do the, go to the U.S., either bring the body and so on. But as they approached the count, uh, they went to the count, one of them had a little child. And they did not know what our chia mtoto nani. So the only person that knows our chia mtoto ni huyu mama ambaye haendi. Ashike mtoto. Na ya kasema ni tawa pereka lakini tashika mtoto huko ndani kwa embassy. Do you know there was one time the, 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 the American embassy before uh, Al-Shabaab. Na hizi Al-Shabaab muombe zishindwe. Yo pepo nyeusi. Inafanyaga wewe ukaguliwe mara ishirini. Na muwezi ingia kule mkua watu wawidi. But those days... Actually, for my first, uh, my first visa, I just walked there and got it. Just walked in, got it. I left the office. The office was, was in church house. And I told the brethren there, me na enda kuchukua visa. I crossed the road, went inside, got my visa, came back and said, nimepata. Then wawiri wegini wawiri wakasama. it tutaenda. It was very easy. So this time... So the lady goes to hold the baby for them, and they also applied for the baby to go to the U.S., a small baby. So the guy on the counter is asking, Munaenda na nani? Naenda na mke wangu na mtoto wetu mdogo. That was the elder brother. But the guy on the waiter asked, where is the child? On the counter. And they said, she, the child is being held by that woman over there. You believe you me because now this is where the miracle happens. If God decides he's going to surprise you, he will. The guy on the other side asked, and you know there is a kiosk. So he, he had to shout, Where mama? Do you want to go to America? The, the lady there holding the baby, you, yes, you. Do you want to go? To and the lady says, yes, come. <laughs> the lady goes, she's given a form, go fill it, go pay at Commercial Bank of Africa, come back, I will wait for you. Now that is what some of the miracles that I pray can happen to some of us. Because when God wants to connect you to his purpose, he will do whatever it takes so that you can find yourself in the purposes of God like Joseph had to find his purpose. His purpose was to rescue his family. So it had to happen. He had to go there. But the going was not easy. So sometimes God can put you in the exact place he wants you to be so that when he's moving, he moves with you. Number two, he can arrange all the details. He has in advance. He has in advance. Yani, until you are wondering, that lady, to, <laughs> why I know that lady, I had not known that detail, but I sold her some land in Ruiru. She bought four, ones like this. So when I visited Boston, I talked to her. Then my host told me that story. And it amused me. Because that lady, ni wale wanaongeaga pole pole. Yani, hawana muzukumo. Ni wale tuwa nampenda jesu, sauti kidogo, haina mugurumo, haina mugodoko. Which means, hata wewe. You don't have to scream, you don't have to yell. If your time comes, something is going to happen. As you go to fulfill the purposes that God has for you. So he, might, he can arrange all the details years in advance. The father had to die and die in America for this woman 
who was not among the list. And to make things even better, some of the brothers were nyimwa. Yeye akapewa. Si wanyimwa upewe? Eh? Si wanyimwa na we upewe kwani kuna ubaya gani? Bwana asifiwe sana. He can open doors that seem shut and tight. That is God. So that you can find your purpose. He can remove any obstacles on your way. So that you can find your purpose. He can take your choices and fit them into his plan that you end up at the right place at just the right time. He can even take your mistakes and bring good out of them. And number seven, he can take tragedy and evil things and use it for your good and for his own glory. We are talking about Joseph. Proverbs 16 and verse 9, the Bible says, In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his, his steps. It's God who does all that. The Lord does that. So what were you born to do? What were you born to do? And it is a hard question and people have struggled with that. People have struggled. What do I do? And Joseph, his life, we find the, the, the struggles he struggled in one chapter. Chapter number 37. And it introduces Joseph in a very short way, but then explain the things that happened that were so negative. And I know that some of you will relate with this very, very personally. Verse number one of chapter 37. Jacob lived in the land of his father sojourning in the land of Canaan. And these are the, the generations of Jacob. Then it goes, Joseph, being 17 years old, was pastoring the flock with his brothers. What was he doing? This man was going to be a prime minister. What was he doing? This man was just a shepherd boy together with others. Therefore, it doesn't matter what I'm doing today. I think, why are you bothered? You know, some of people are so bothered. Why are you so bothered with what I'm doing? Because what I'm doing will not stop God from pushing me to my purpose. I will find my purpose regardless of what I am doing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So what was he doing? He was just shepherding with his brothers. He was just shepherding with his brother. So the story of Joseph, uh, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, can be explained with those verses that I read. And we discover three things. Number one, that he was only 17. So please don't despise me. My purpose, God can start them very early. Even 15, even when you are being born. Some of us, when we are being born, there are people who say evil things about us, like Jabez. But that does not, will not stop God turning it around for me. He was just 17. And he was working in the family business. He doesn't have a clue, actually, about his own future like some of us we have no clue about our future and that's why sometimes even when we hear god speaking we wonder is it us thou mighty man of allah and then you're asking are you talking about me or my brother i would like to be next to you because some of you know how to pass on the blessing you know see your mimi you so i would like to be next to you every time we will use you man of allah so me or oh, bishop, I receive. Are you getting the point? Ati, wala wanaendaga nihawa. Ah, bas, netakuwa karibu na ukizema nihawa, mi na napokea. Because some of us miss it. Thou man of valor, Gideon, you are. God looks not what you have at the moment, but what you can do with what he will give you. Finding your purpose. So life is like that. If we said, Joseph, do you know why you are born? He would have no idea. He would have said, no, me, I was born to be a shepherd like my father, like my grandfather, like my great-grandfather Abraham. That is all that I was born for. So some of us, but blessed is, is you. Actually, if you are in doubt, if you are aware, if you are doubting, please be in the father's business. Just do something for God. Just be involved because God will not leave you. He will push you to your purpose very, very soon. You know, sometimes people, people say, oh, Bishop, I want to discover God's will. 
But the answer really, to be honest, is that you might not. Your prayer should change and say, God, locate me. Because where I am, the things around me, I could be in a pit. I could be in a pit. And you know when you're in a pit, umefungwa. But even there, the Lord, uh, Joseph, knew that he was with the Lord. He knew that he was with the Lord, even at that situation where he found himself. The real problem we face are not out there. They are always in here on the inside. That's where we fight our greatest battle. Why am I saying this? It's because sometimes our struggle, we think our struggles are out there. And we can blame everybody and everything. Forgetting that it is within me, it is where I am that I need to deal. It is not where I'm thinking the problem is. Because for, 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 for Joseph, we find him having lots of uh, challenges in his life. He was purchased by Potiphar. Before he is purchased, he's put in a pit. Before he's put in a pit, he is hated by his brothers. He, he rose, he was promoted in Potiphar's house for a little while, then falsely accused and put into prison. Then in prison, he finds two people, the baker and butler. And then the butler forgets about him. He forgets him. Then he stands before Pharaoh by God's ordinance. You know, sometimes I want to believe somebody needs to dream dreams and they bring to you and you interpret because it will build you up. Oh, learn to interpret dreams. Be a dream interpreter because your miracle, some of you, is there as you interpret the dreams. Then he becomes the prime minister of Egypt. Then he meets his brothers. Then he gives his family a home in Egypt. Now, giving a family a home in Egypt is the purpose that God had for him. But how did he get there? He was hated, put in a pit, sold as a slave for 20 silver, you know, sold in, a, accused wrongly, put in prison. The butler forgets him. But God has not forgotten you yet. He's still working to bring you to the place where he wants you to be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So there is something that God wants to do for us. And he's willing and he's ready. And he wants to come to me and push me so that I can find the purpose of which God has apprehended me. Because there is. There is. There is a, a man called Michael Jackson. You remember Michael Jackson, the guy who had bleached his face until he looks like a ghost? You are beautiful the way you are. Yes. Black is beautiful. Yes. I don't know why people think you have to be a Muzungu. You know? Si utembea huko uone. Ikichomeka na jua inaonekaka sura baya sana. And Jackson bleached his uh, whatever. But just before he, of course, for you that were music lovers, he died about two decades uh, ago. But just before he died, he sang a song. And these are the relics of the song. He said, I am starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. He sang a very beautiful song. He never changed. He overdosed himself and died. Don't you think the problem is not then from outside? The problem is from inside. Even if you look at yourself on a mirror and say whatever you are saying, if you don't look yourself in the heart and deal with the heart problems, you will always struggle there. So the real problem we face today are not out there. They are always in here on the inside. The world is messed up place. It says, we, in the Bible says we are all sinners, separated from God, died in our sins, spiritually blind unable to help ourselves. If, if you look at the life of, of, of uh, Joseph, you will find there are seven steps from Canaan to Egypt. Seven steps. The first step is that he worked in the family business. Verse number two. Joseph, being 17 years old, was pastoring the flock with his brothers. So he was there working for the Lord. And I pray that God can help as many as can serve the Lord. Let's serve him. Let's wait as we do the business that he has called us to do. Secondly, he stood for different values. 
He was a boy with the sons of Bilhah and Selfa, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father because his idea was different. He knew they were not walking right. So he brings the message to his father. And his father knew him. Knew Joseph, no wonder he makes him a coat of many colors. Number three, he was marked out as a, a special at an early age. You know, I normally say I am special. Like Jeremiah was told, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I have blessed you. I set you apart. And a lot of us need to believe that, that God has a good plan for us. He was marked. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his sons because he was the son of his old age and he made him a robe of many colors. He helped, he made a robe of many colors. He is going towards Egypt. He is now at his peak. Oh, he is loved by his father. If, if, if your father had many wives, and uh, you belong to the wife that was loved. And you are the firstborn of the wife that was loved. Normally, unaretako karibu sana na kifua ya mzee. Whatever gine, wanatupu wakando kidogo. Wakae bari kidogo. So he loved Joseph. So that is the pinnacle. But the fourth thing is that he got into two dreams. Two dreams. And those dreams changed everything. The first dream he dreams and you know he's 17. 17. Teenager. Teenager buwana. Matini. Matini wakipata kitu lazima wabonge. Awezi kaa ye apana. Kaa randa usike. Kunambio kwa randa usike ama kunambio na mnagani anyway. I will mess myself up here. I better not go that route anyway. But the point that I'm bringing is that here he is, he dreamt. He cannot sleep. He comes telling everybody, hey, everybody, listen. There was a wonderful dream. You know what? We were all there in the field and we were doing this together. And you know what? Everybody brought their sheep together. You know, well. But mine where I put stood like a soldier. But all of you us. Let me tell you the truth. He did not know what he was saying. But these senior boys knew what he was saying. They interpreted immediately. Oh, when you takuam dosuetu, immediately they hated him. But let me tell you something. If the dream is from God, whether they hate you, you will dream again to confirm it. And the next dream is even more powerful than the first. So he dreamt again. Now he comes to everybody. Daddy, come, come, daddy. Now this time I dreamt. You, now, first of all, let's ask ourselves, where is Rachel? Because he said, you and my mother, you are bow, bowing, and Rachel had died. Huh? So in other words, it must be a revelation. He is seeing a deeper revelation where even the mother that was not alive, they are all bowing at him. Then they hated him the more. Uyu jamaa, ata baba yake akamambia, kweri, ata mimi nita... But the truth of the matter is the boy, that is a dream. Why do you hate me for the dream that I'm dreaming? You wait until it was fulfilled. Now look at the sequence. His brothers hated him the more. His brothers hated him, verse number four. They hated him even more, verse five. Verse number eight, they hated him even more. Verse number 11, his brothers were jealous of him. In other words, now he is going to the lowest level. But he is going towards his purpose. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't you worry. You're going towards your purpose. You see, because some of us, when we are hit, we think we are not going to our purpose. So what do we do? We leave the journey that we are going, but Joseph could not leave. He kept on knowing God and trusting in him. And you know what? From that point on, his brothers betrayed him. We are looking at his ways. Their brothers betrayed him. 
The brothers conspired to kill him. Verse number 18, verse number 19. When they see him coming, they divisively say, here comes the dreamer. We're going to kill the dreamer, but you know what? You can kill the dreamer, but you cannot kill the dream. I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. Because the dream is bigger than the dreamer. The dreamer is just a vessel that God wants to use. By the way, you cannot even kill the dreamer before the dream has come to pass. So you are wasting your time. If I have dreamt, I will leave until I see my dream come to pass. I want to stay there. Number C, they plan to kill him and throw him in one of the nearby pits. Verse 20. But they ended up throwing him alive into an empty pit. Verse number 24. Are you hearing? This guy is going to his purpose. What is his purpose? Prime Minister. Now, if at that point somebody calls him Prime Minister, sir, what will be his response? Usi mcheze. Nye nye. Nye nye watu wengine. So, unaniche. Ata ata But the truth be told, behind the scene, God was seeing a 17-year-old boy, the Prime Minister of Egypt. There are some of you what God is seeing in your life. If God can only open your eyes to see it. Every time I travel, this statement comes to life. And the statement is this. Who are you? Nikemani. I like going back to where I come from. Who are you? Nikemani. Where the Google map gets to a place and it says, it cannot move any further because there are no marked addresses. You're getting the point. So you get to a place, you say, God, Awesome! What has happened? Where am I? So that I can also always humble myself. Ili nijue hakuna kitu nimepatia mungu. Hamna. Ni ile tu neema zake. Bwana isu apewe sifa. Neema zake tu peke yake. So Joseph, there he is. Going low, he cannot believe that he is going to become like that. You know, what makes me so sad about the whole story is his brothers. Actually, they hated him so much that the E part says they ate a meal while he was in the pit. He is screaming. Their brother is screaming, help, help. They are eating a meal. Now, I would imagine as they ate, who brought the meal? Joseph. But what is happening? They are talking ill about him and how to kill him. Actually, they were eating wapate nguvu ya kumuwa. There are people that have thought evil about you. But can I tell you something? There are some Ishmaelites that are coming that way. They are coming to rescue you. You will be rescued. But some of the rescue sometimes which happens to us it doesn't come the way we want. It comes in a very, very interesting way. Here he is. Number seven. He ends up a slave in Egypt. Because they ask themselves in verse 27, what profit it is for us if we kill our brothers and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. Now that was very key. In them, they discovered that was their brother. So he ended up as a slave in Egypt. I want to bring what I'm sharing to a close. And uh, remember, we are going to find our purpose. And we are... You see, for Joseph, we know. Situme soma hiyo story. Kwa hivyo, ni kama ile mpire ikichezwa ambao liona gorumahia imeshinda tasker. Sasa kama wenu wa gorumahia unagoja tu, ukishindwa, kwa nini, kwa nini ujamaa na asumbuka hapa? Hii kitu tulishinda. Lakini bado unagoja mushi, lakini we unawasiwasi. So, when we read the story of Joseph, you and me, we are saying, we know, Pastor, Bishop, we know. We know his purpose. But we are saying, before we find or he found his purpose. He went through life like you and I. So in other words, I'm going to find my purpose too. 
It doesn't matter where I am at the moment. I'll find my purpose. Then the sooner I find my purpose, the better two things which are critical to us. When God chooses a leader or chooses you to bless you, he will often allow enemies to arise who will put that leader, that Christian into a test. You try it. Hannah had Penina. And Penina, she was not that terrible. No. She wasn't that terrible. But she was just an African woman from Israel. Who? An African woman with the children. Who? My goodness. And the mo especially if you have sons. Who? So whatever she said to, Pen to, to Hannah provoked Hannah to believe God for her miracle. Because Hannah would cry to God bitterly. Because there were, and we were told in this church, there are some Hannahs that even if you rebuke and bound, they are not going anywhere. You wake up in the morning, they are there. Actually, that preacher told us something that I thought, eh, usipitie pale, akasema, some of the, the Peninas are your spouse. Munalara pamoja? Na na make sure utalia machozi moto. Some of them are your bosses. Every morning unaingia pale. Anaku enjoy. Unalia. Na wengine wamelia pale mbaka wamenunua hizo kampuni. You know? Yani unamba. Mungu. Eh, we, ni, we, ni, we, ni, bas. Hii ujamanta muandika. Kuna jamaa wamekua hivyo. I have a friend who bought a company. Yaka nunua wazungu. Yaka waandika. Kazi. When God has declared something. Now, please check your neighbor. Do you have a dream neighbor? Do you have a dream? Has God given you a dream? Do you feel it within you? Now there will be people who will try to stop it. But you are unstoppable because it cannot end until you find your purpose in, and you can't die. Actually, some of you need to know how Ah, wengine mnafikiria utakufa kwa sababu unaumwa na tumbo. Sijui hasa, haufi mpaka umalize upate kusudi lako. Ai. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. So that is the first le lesson that I have learned from this man called Joseph. When God decided to bless Joseph to be a prime minister, remember, it's only God who knows Joseph is a prime minister. Joseph does not know. Just like God knows who you are, but you don't know. You have no clue. Because you haven't found it yet. May God help you to find it. The second thing, when God chooses a leader or chooses you, not even his enemies can stop him from doing God's will. There is no way you are unstoppable when it comes to what God is telling you to do. Why do I believe this? Because after he went to his highest point in his father's house, he was hated and went to the lowest, at the pit. Then he started climbing from the pit. He became a slave. From a slave, he became the head of Potiphar's household. That's right. Then he was taken to prison. Oh, I like this guy. He goes to prison. Then God starts lifting him again from prison. He becomes the head of the other prisoners. He remembers he still has work to do. He becomes an interpreter of dreams. And God lifts him from the prison this time into state house. In other words, you are seated. And this I will always say. You meka na mtu tafadhali mweshimu. Please. Please. Ule mtu meka na ye mweshimu tu. Kwa sababu Yusufu anaweza kuwa wakandisa hili letu hapa na anasikiza. Na wee Yusufu buwana kikubari kuende state house. Usi ni sahau. <laughs> na usi sahau ule munaketi na. You know, usi jatena ukasema barabara imekua ati sahina, ati ikipata. Umebarikiwa hapa, eh? Bas, uki, ukifika state house, usi tu sahau. Utukumbuke tuko area tu katika jina la yesu. Finding your purpose. What are we saying? <laughs> it's not sunburst. It's a sunrise. You're born. You're shepherd. Thrown into a pit. You rise up. 
head of Potiphar's, thrown into the pit, and then finally you're in the state house. There are some of us that has those things are happening. Yet I know there are some of you that know your purpose. May God help you to walk in your purpose so that you can fulfill. And some of you, and I, I don't know whether I said this a little earlier, some of you, your purpose is to make money. Siniseme. Yes. To make money. So that when you hear people are giving, you don't sweat in your hand and sweat in your nose. Uh, you know there are some pesa tena, eh? You sweat here, and I sweat mkono. But there are some Actually, there are some people who wait. I visited one of them in the U.S. And I'm here, Bishop, unitishagi pesa? Tafadhali, ombea jirani yako umuambie, ningependa ubarikiwe, baka uo ukiambia Bishop. Bishop, hakuna, hakuna project? Hakuna, hakuna project? There is no project around? Because that is your purpose. And when you do it, you are happy. When you do it, you are happy. You feel fulfilled. Cha ni kuachie hapo. Naona ni kuachie pale ufikie purpose yako. Lakini, tukiasimama. Tukiasimama ni vizuri. You know, tunasimama kwa sababu wengine basi mumebarikiwa. Bwana wabariki. Lakini wengine tuko chini, tumeshushwa. Tunajua tumedharauliwa. Lakini tunajua Bwana anakusudi na mimi natafuta purpose yangu. Tungemulilia Mungu, tumwambie Bwana remember me. Bwana and you know when he remembers you, even your neighbors will know, your haters will know, your People, the, people, the person who has employed you, you will know. And even you, you will know. Amen. May the Lord bring it to pass. And may you not die until you find your purpose and fulfill it in the land of the living. <laughs>